What's up, everyone? This is David Greenspan, and you are listening to Season 2 of the Mindshare Podcast, a proud member of the Industry Syndicate Media Network. Additional podcasts are available at Mindshare101.com and on all the major podcast platforms. This week's episode is sponsored by Kits Keep in Touch Systems. This is Episode 84. Wow, what a first half of the year. (laughs) And I don't mean that in a good way. I mean, look, I'm not being negative about the whole thing because there's definitely been some integral learning moments, but wow, wow, wow. I mean, fires, COVID, killer hornets, Arctic weather in the summer, riots. Should I go on? (laughs) You're probably thinking like, no, man, stop. Or like, what movie is that? (laughs) Like craziness. And it has definitely turned everybody's worlds upside down. But is that upside down in a bad way? See, I know for me personally, I have learned so much. And this was a well-needed break. I mean, let me explain. About 20 years ago, I started building custom homes with my uncle. Over a short period, we had built about 27 different houses. And this was like right after I graduated college where I spent four years in marketing. And like, whoa, (laughs) after I say that, I feel old when I start talking about how long ago that was. But anyways, while we were building, I decided to go get my real estate license. Yes, I went and got my real estate license. I also went and got certified to sell mortgages here in Ontario. I went back to get my building codes that I could, well, know what I was talking about when I was speaking with inspectors and trades and even the new homeowners. Now, keep in mind, I was like 21 at the time, right? And my uncle was like only 10 years older than me. We were both kids and building these beautiful houses. So it's really important that people took us seriously. Now, you're probably thinking, okay, hold up a minute. Why aren't you still building houses? And what? You have your real estate license? So why aren't you selling real estate? (laughs) Yeah, I imagine there's some confusion going on right now. So don't forget, though, that although I went back to school three times after I graduated, not to mention the countless sales courses I've taken in my time, I did go to school for marketing to begin with. Yeah, but why'd you stop building? Well, I wasn't the actual builder. That was my uncle. I mean... He was the guy with the money. I was the guy who, uh, well, I had to earn this over time, right? So I had to earn like the, the sort of the trust and everything else from him through working together. But I became the guy who was on site while he was in the office dealing with the paperwork, the bills, the clients, and all the other stuff, right? So I was there and I was dealing with the trades and I was dealing with the, you know, the suppliers and the material and the, and the inspectors and making sure that the site was moving the way it needed to be moving and really organizing all that, even the walkthroughs with some of the homeowners sometimes. Now, anyways, at one point, he got a big opportunity to build a resort project out of town. And I personally, at the time, I was just unable to make the move. I mean, Jen and I were getting married. We were going to start a family and do all that stuff. And I just, I couldn't move out of town for the length of time that it needed to happen. So I finished the last projects that we had on the go. And like, that was it. That moment, that is when I started Kits, our, our marketing company. A completely different business. And instead of getting up in the morning and, Thrown on some shorts and a, a, a you know work shorts and a, a t-shirt and a pair of work boots and just jumping in the pickup that I drive from site to site, supplier to supplier, you know, always outside, basking in the sun, the rain and the mud too when it was wet outside, you know, but always on the go. Now I went from that and now it was buckled down to a desk. I mean, getting up every day, dressing up to represent myself professionally. And do, then doing the exact same drive day in and day out to the same office, to the same desk for almost like 16 years. Now, to some, I probably just describe that as if, like as if I got a life sentence, which invariably, I kind of like looking back, I feel like I did. I mean, don't get me wrong. The time and effort that was put forth over all these years, the stresses that came along with it all, the daily grind, well, that's what's allowed me to talk about this right now, to look back on my accomplishments, to be able to enjoy the successes that have been created. I mean, we are so fortunate to have so many people from all over North America who believe in what we do for them, who trust us to help them build their business, some who have been clients of ours for like 16 years and, and others who are signing up today. We've created a machine with this business and it continues to pump along every day. And for this, I am grateful. Definitely worked my tail off for it, and it's come with a lot of stress, a lot of anxiety, a lot of ups and downs, but even more so, a lot of opportunity. 
And we've heard this for years, right? Nothing comes easy. The things we want in life are always the hardest to get. That whole thing about what you really want is always on the other side of fear. Kits has provided me the ability to grow as a person, the opportunity to grow as a person. It has also awarded me the opportunity to learn from thousands of people every year, asking tens of thousands of questions to people, to realtors, understanding where business comes from, what challenges people face, how the business really works. I have been so lucky to be able to soak in so much over my time. And for me, it has been so important to share that back with the world. Hence, where Mindshare 101 comes in. You see, as I was building kits, I realized that I'd be able to grow a lot faster if I were to speak to more people each day. So I'm really diligent with my schedule, with my phone calls, with my marketing, my admin, and everything else I need to do. Much the same, I know that if I can have a conversation with two people at one time, then my chances at success are essentially now double. Well, what about if I speak to 10 or even 100 or even 1,000 at one time? Wow, can you imagine? And that's exactly what I started doing. I've been doing sales presentations forever, but no one wants to be sold. And then, like, I then learned that instead of selling, when I focus on education, well, I catch a lot more bees with honey. So I started to dig into everything I've learned, and I watched as the industry continued to evolve and technology continued to grow at a crazy pace. And I saw that craziness turn into some ridiculousness as well. All these bright, shiny objects, so many new ideas, and so many just started flocking to spend all this money to try and find the magic pill. <laughs> you know, you and I both know there is no magic pill. So as I watched, I learned, I researched, I asked questions, and with it all, I formulated my own opinions. And then it became a thing. And that thing was called, is called, Mindshare. You see, I started with videos. The presentation opportunities began to grow. And slowly but surely, Mindshare became a thing here in our real estate industry. And again, for this, I am grateful. And instead of being complacent, <laughs> I poured gasoline on the fire. I mean, kept pushing and pushing until I finally decided that it was time to step back from kits and focus a lot more time and effort on building this. And that is when I officially branded it as Mindshare 101. Now, side note, stepping back means entrusting our amazing kits team to manage our day-to-day production, help our clients do our demos, take on sales and customer service by building a solid team. You see, by building that team, I am now focused on the business instead of in the business. See, I find my enjoyment in this business, right? Still locked in the same drive to to the office every day, still locked in the same desk and, and all of our great staff, but now focused on the dream I had a number of years ago for how to grow kits. And that was to speak with more people at one time. And that is exactly what I've been doing. So for the past four years, I don't know, maybe five now, I haven't been counting. But I've been very focused on helping our industry grow, helping my clients and everyone in the business, clients or not, find their own success, find your success. So when I get on stage with an audience in front of me, I mean, that's where I get hyped up. It puts me on another planet. And this isn't about ego or the, hey, look at me. This is about watching the expressions on people's faces. The heads nodding in agreement. This is about knowing, and I mean, (laughs) some of them could be nodding in disagreement, right? But this is about knowing that I am able to help so many people. And I can't tell you, like, what a rush. There is nothing like a live audience. And that... That was not the same drive to the office. That was not or is not the same desk that I've been sitting in. You see, my speaking gigs have afforded me the opportunity to travel to different cities, eat at different hotels, meet new people, and and all of that is so exciting. And now the evolution includes a full-time speaking schedule where I get paid to do what I love. It includes both group and one-to-one coaching options. It includes training courses. And, of course, this podcast What an awesome ride, and we are so far from done. But then back in March, things changed. COVID took over, and I don't have to get into the semantics of this. We all know what happened. But along with it, all of my speaking gigs dried right up. Well, I mean, the in-person stuff was canceled, for now at least. But think about it. This is like you having all of these closings that are set up and signed for. It's happening. Then all of a sudden, it's like, nope, not happening anymore. And unfortunately, 
The only way you can deal with it is to say, I completely understand. Wow. Totally wild. Like, I'm literally on the brink of my busiest year ever for speaking gigs. I'm on track to hit my 2020 goals, which are massive, and achieve the success I planned for. And then, bang, welcome to COVID. Realistically, there's so much more detail I can share about all this. And when I tell you this story, which I'm about to help you understand why it all even matters to you, my mind is wheeling with so much more. But I want to explain why I shared all this and, well, what it has to do with you. Think about it. We all got nailed by COVID. Everyone's business took a hit. I mean, some people kept pushing forward no matter what, as I did. But a global pandemic is what it is. And self-isolation hit everyone really, really hard. And so many businesses have had to turn off the lights and close the doors. But fortunately for us, we have not had to face that harsh reality. But like everyone else, it has been about the adjustment. Trying to navigate these waters, these new waters we're in. And I, I, I don't want to use the term new normal, so I'm not going to. We are back to normal. And ultimately, like, we all got to find a way to keep paying our bills, right? So as I look back on these past 16, 16 years and, and everything that I've been working to build, it's evident that the work never stops, that we have to keep pushing. And that we need to remain positive and optimistic no matter what life throws at us. I mean, that's instead of looking at the negative effects of this, right? And I've made sure to keep writing my grateful journal every night since this thing started. I mean, I've been doing this for a few years now, but I've been very, very diligent about it. And this has allowed me to enjoy every moment. I mean, no doubt, it's been an adjustment. And Jen and I have the two little ones at home. I mean, Josh is nine. Leah is seven. These guys are getting so big so fast. But this whole homeschooling causes us to adjust our schedule and our focus on helping them grow and develop. And in the end, they are why we do it all anyways, right? Now think about this. Prior to COVID, as I mentioned that daily drive and the somewhat monotony of the routine, I was only able to spend about one to two hours a day at most with my kids. That was all I had. It sucked. My kids are my everything. And I was only getting to see them for a little bit of time each day. We used to tell people how busy we were, how we never had enough time. And it used to bother me how I didn't get to spend enough time with my children. Now all of a sudden, now I'm not getting in the car every day. Now I'm spending every waking moment with them. It's like, as bad as COVID was... It created so much good in life. It was and is always just a matter of how you look at it. And I mean, think about it. We were driving less. We were helping the environment more. You could tell it just seemed like the birds were chirping. They were happier. The squirrels were running with smiles on their faces. You know what I'm saying? Like everything just seemed, it seemed so much cleaner, so much nicer. People were walking by on the sidewalks and they're smiling at each other, waving at each other. Again, the time we have with family. There are so many silver linings in this entire thing. There's so much positive that came out of this. Now, now, you know, I get to have my desk outside on my back deck if I'm not downstairs here in the studio like I am right now recording this podcast. I get to enjoy the good weather, the blue skies, and and all of this time with the kids. Like, what a blessing. Again, this has been my silver lining. Again, it is all about how you look at it. The other thing, though, as my show 101 continues to grow and take over, And so much of what we do is focused on education. The other thing that was really like a real shock to me was now that the whole world has started Zooming, everyone and the dog are subject matter experts. Everybody has a show or a a meeting. And for the past four months, there were a million places you could look every day. So not only did my speaking gigs dry up, well, mind you, I shouldn't say it like that. Many of them did go virtual, but our plan for a virtual meeting is very different than an in-person meeting. And with that, now it was even harder for me to get my message across because it was getting lost amongst the millions of other things going on. Long short of it, not that that was the shortest explanation, (laughs) but the idea here is that we all face new challenges. We all had our worlds turned upside down, and we all had to and still have to figure out how to navigate the big, wide world that we live in. And part of managing it all is knowing our goals. 
Now, this is something I've been doing for the past few years. This is, you know, this is how I've been able to stay on track or, or even get back on track. And I, I keep referencing what it is that I ultimately want in life. You see, setting goals is something that's talked about by most coaches and most motivators and mentors and, and whoever else. But for me, back in the day, I never even knew where to start. Like, I, I had no, no idea write down my goals. I don't know what I want. Things keep keep changing. I just, you know, I want to have lots of money. I don't know. Fast forward. I finally figured it all out. And so I want to share this with you. I want I want I want to share this with you so you could do the same for yourself. I want you to feel like you have direction. Like you know what you want to achieve. I want you to have a life plan so no matter what life throws at you, you can have a guide to keep you on track. And it's very simple. It's very, very simple. And it goes like this. What do you ultimately want in life? Write it down. And remember, it's very important that you use a pen for uh, pen to paper on this thing. You cannot just think about it and think it's going to come to life. You've got to write it, take it out of your head. You've got to see it. And then you've got to reread it and you've got to believe it. So what do you ultimately want in life? And that's not today, that's not tomorrow, that's not this year. I'm saying in life. Write it down. Next, what do you have to do this year in a small 365-day window to get you closer to what you ultimately want? Write that down. And understand that you most likely will not achieve what you really want in life in this small window of one calendar year. Right. So, again, we're taking our lifetime, we're breaking it down to annual and we're saying to ourselves, how much can I get down? How much closer can I get to that lifetime this year? I get it. I'm not going to achieve everything, but I can take myself a little bit closer. Now, to win your year, what do you have to get done every month? So every 30 days. Again, we're breaking the year down now into small incremental chunks, 12 chunks. Right. Then to win your month. What needs to get done every seven days, right? So every week, and again, breaking down your month into, you know, weeks and, and, and you know, how many, <laughs> what do I have to get done this week? You make, make sense, right? Then to win your week, what has to get done each day? So we've now taken our lifetime. We've broken it right down. And we have a great sense, a great plan, a guide for what needs to be done every single day. Like for me, part of my life plan includes getting my podcast done today. Does that make sense? Right? So I know where I ultimately want to be. I know what I want for the podcast. I know what the podcast or I, what I want the podcast to do for the business. But I still got to execute on the podcast. Right? So it comes down to actually executing, planning, scheduling, having, having a guide to what I'm going to be doing. Add on to that, once you've figured out your goals, to review your Mindshare Model T. Okay? This is your marketing plan and your marketing budget. So we know our goals. We know what we're trying to achieve. Well, now it's a matter of figuring out what's the, like, what, what support are we going to put in there? What's the plan? How much money do I have for this? So you review the Mindshare model. And you got to make sure you're not over budget, right? Because you're going to be causing yourself to work harder, not make as much money. And, and instead, like my goal here is that you are working easier. You are spending less. And you are making a whole lot more. Now, if you don't know what I'm talking about with the Mindshare model, then you need to visit my site, Mindshare101.com, and you need to get started with some Mindshare 101 training. But we can talk about that. If you got questions about it, get in touch with me. But go do it. It's very important. Now, when it comes to this type of stuff, goal setting, it's most often an end-of-year project for people, right? But instead, I want to encourage you to do this every three months. As one quarter is ending, you're reviewing... And planning for the next. And now, now you are not most people. You see, you are constantly in a forward motion. And you are adjusting your plan as the days go on. Think about how powerful this is. You're not waiting a year. You are doing this every 90 days. And now when something like a, you know, global pandemic hits, you are ready with open arms. Because you have a plan. Now, speaking of a plan, as I mentioned the education of all these new subject matter experts, back in late November when we laid out our plan for 2020, 
It included officially launching our live events for our Mindshare Masters group and our full-on group coaching program starting spring of 2020. Ha! <laughs> Who would have known that we were going to have such a challenge with this? Think about it. Not that we knew this, but part of this plan with those live events was to start inviting people to live Zoom calls in the first week of May. But by the time we got there, people were thinking like, oh no, come on man, not another Zoom invite. So we had a decision to make. Do we keep moving forward or do we change direction? Do we pivot the way everybody's been talking about? I pivoted out just like I'm Zoomed out. But we thought, we brainstormed, we whiteboarded, and we, we all agreed that all of these new subject matter experts won't last. No offense. But these are just realtors, for the most part, who are looking for something to do. And when this market gets back to normal, will they remain consistent with all of this? Or will they just go back to selling real estate? And nothing wrong with that, but, I mean, in fact, go. <laughs> Sorry, love you guys. But, of course, the latter was the answer we agreed on, right? Everybody's going to go back to doing their thing. Plus, we also knew that this is just a moment in time. However, our plan is for the long game. All of this will pass. Hence, our decision to keep moving ahead with our group coaching live events. Now, as I share this with you, we've gotten together every other week for a live mind share. This has been a powerful collaboration of minds. Everyone sharing success, ideas, talking through challenges. Our group has been joining in for private Q&As with subject matter experts who are on my special podcast, you know, my, my, my guests each week. And there's a marketing and sales content, like daily, that is loaded into the group, again, daily, for everybody to take advantage of. Which, side note, just last night, well, mind you, I think two nights ago now, uh, one of our Mindshare Masters told me that because of our group and the content that's going on in there, they met because I challenged everybody prior to the weekend to go out and meet people. And we did a little mini challenge, and I just wanted to get the fuel going, right? Um, but they met three new people this past weekend, and one of them turned into a listing. And again, they credited that just from the motivation and the mini challenge that we threw out there, right? Because friendly competition is fun. Now, because we mapped out our plan, we had our goal set. We stayed the course no matter what COVID threw at us. And we are now well past the wondering of whether or not we should be inviting people to Zoom meetings after everyone has been Zoomed out. And instead, we're already being rewarded with positive results. There's so much going on in this group and some of the recent topics, which actually I want to share some tips with you about right now. Uh, I, you know, all this stuff to help your biz. But I want to help you get past these past few months. I want to help you achieve that success that you're looking for. So some of the stuff that we were talking about recently, and I want to, I want to again, I want to take you through these things and just kind of help with with some of this stuff. But um, we talked multiple offers because it is a seller's market out there right now, from what it seems, just across the board, and people are running into situations where they're, you know, there's that multiple offer, and and you're working hard and you're doing all sorts of stuff, and you still don't win this thing. So I want to help you figure that part out. The idea of how to find new clients, we're getting a lot of questions about, well, how do I get out there and find new clients? There's a lot of stuff that's changed, a lot of different rules around it. You know, people are scared, people are this, people are that. I don't know what to do. Let's talk about that. And then there's what to say when calling people on the phone. And I cannot stress enough, <laughs> this is a people business. So you want to make sure you're talking to people every single day. But most people don't make their phone calls because... Most people are actually scared of what to say. So I want to talk to you about that, okay? So here's, here's a few tips, and, 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 you know, if you're driving in the car right now, uh, you've obviously, you know how to get back to this podcast, so make sure you're, you're uh, maybe bookmarking things or noting things. Uh, but if you are sitting around, if you're in the backyard or you're, you're you know, at home listening to this right now, um, write stuff down, okay? Take some notes on this. I want to take you through each of these three topics with some actionable detail. So the first one here, forgive me little sip of coffee. First one here, multiple offers. Like I just said, we seem to be in a seller's market, right? So a lot of listings are going into multiples. And the thing is, after all this time off for a lot of people, getting that next deal right now, it's really crucial. But what do you do when you're faced with a multiple offer situation? How do you give yourself the chance to win? Well, here's a few ideas for you, okay? And these are things I want you to write down because, again, this is how you're going to give yourself the chance to win. So I want you to think about first, price. Are you truly giving the best price possible? Or are you trying to negotiate? 
Negotiation is always crucial, and those who do it well win more. Plus, this is a major part of what you do for your clients. However, when faced with multiples, if you want the best chance to win, be serious about the offer and submit one that's going to be a real contender. Deposit. Again, very similar to price. If you're serious about the property, then show the seller exactly that and offer an even higher deposit than asked for. So if they're saying, you know, $30,000 deposit, maybe you come in with a $60,000 deposit. Like, blow their minds. Tickle them with dollar signs. Little things like that get people going, oh, wow, look at that. Dates. Think about the conditions and the irrevocable dates. How can you adjust these? Not to harm your client, but instead to make getting this deal done as easy as possible. You see, it's natural human instinct that people like easy, right? We will always choose easy over hard, again, human nature. And this can work both ways. So you need to really want this property and be sure about what you may be waiving, right? So again, those dates, make sure it's in your client's best interest. Be sure about what you're doing. Make sure you really want this thing. But now you can play with those. You can, you can start to work those timelines into the deal and adjust. And again, that might get you the win. This is a big one. Sentimental value. Let me ask you this. As you went through and did your first tour of the home, maybe your second tour because you're really liking it, and you went back and you noticed things, what did you notice that was really important in the house that might mean a lot to the seller? Include it in your offer. Write a cover letter about that thing and share how you noticed how much that must mean so you want to X. Let me give you an example here, okay? I've been measuring the kids' height since the day they were able to stand, and I still do this twice a year, every single year, okay? So every six months, I'm grabbing the kids, I'm putting them up against the two-by-four, right? And I'm, I'm marking it down. And these lines are right there on those, you know, two two-by-fours at the base of my basement stairs. We've got an unfinished basement. So I would for sure, and I'll tell you right now, I will for sure be cutting those out before I leave this house. And although you, like, may not know my plans, while touring my home, you may notice the little lines on the wood. So now in your cover letter, you should mention that you saw how amazing it must have been to raise my family in this home, and that you were so excited to start the next chapter by raising your family here. Think about it. When I read that cover letter, you'll have hit a warm spot in my heart. And beyond any money or contracts, you've just used a strategic approach that most or even all the others would not have even thought about. Plus, after raising my family here, would I prefer to sell my home to someone who's going to just turn it into a rental or someone who's going to take care of it? Touch those heartstrings. Relationship. Do you happen to know the other agent? The ability to communicate in the back hallway is always an advantage. When you can have a conversation, you can learn more, you know, more ahead of time. It's no doubt going to help you better understand how to win the deal. So always be compliant with the laws around how to work a deal, but never discount the power of a relationship. In the end, that's what this business is all about. So get to know the other agents, network with them, go for coffees with them and lunches and, and build that positive mindshare with them and give yourself more opportunity to win that deal for your clients. Now you're better prepared to win your next multiple offer situation. Okay, We went through a whole bunch of things there. We talked about price. We talked about deposit. We talked about dates, sentimental value. And that's a big one. Most people won't even touch on that. And we talked about relationship. Again, when you're faced with multiple offers, think about these points. Think about how you can leverage these in the, in the offer, in the negotiation part of the process, and you will give yourself a better chance to win. Now, I'm also getting asked a lot about, well, you know, Dave, how do I find new clients, right? And, and I, was, uh, I was on a call the other day with one of my coaching clients, and, you know, although we focus on a lot of effort on uh, database, the common question does come up a lot about how to continue to feed our database. And for me, it's really important that when you add people in, you set everyone up on your 10-year plan, ensuring that you are building Mindshare for an entire decade with this person. Remember, we don't move every day. This is a long game. 
So with everything that happened, the restrictions, the social distancing, and everything else you can think of, meeting new people and finding new contacts, it's not as cut and dry as it was before. For example, you may be a professional door knocker, but you know now you're not comfortable going door to door, so what do you do? Or maybe you're the person who's always at the gym socializing in the coffee shop, but now it's changed, so what do you do? So here's what I want you to think about in order to help determine what you can do to meet new people. And keep in mind, this will be different for most people. But ask yourself these three questions, okay? What did I do before? What can I and can't I do now? What else can I do? What did I do before? What can I and can't I do now? What else can I do? Write these questions down. Think about your answers and write them down too. And after you do this, you know, this, this little exercise, you will have your answer. So again, what did I do before? I door knocked. What can I and can't I do now? I can't door knock anymore. What else can I do? Start to mark it down. Now, as you're doing this, think about your seven ways to communicate with people, right? And again, if you haven't got the seven ways, go to the website right now, download it. It's a free ebook. It's right there on the homepage. Just click on it, download it. You're going to have it. And I want you to use all seven of those ways every single day to go out there and build Mindshare. Very, very important. These are the only seven ways to communicate with people. But now when you think about again, right, what did I do before? Ask yourself, what part of those did I do to get business? Then say, what can I and can't I do now? So maybe, you know, I can, you know, connect with people on social media, but I cannot go door knocking. Or maybe the what else can I do is like, oh, yeah, Facebook groups and, and you know, <clears throat> phone calls. So there's a whole bunch of stuff that can be done. What did I do before? What can I and can't I do now? What else can I do? That, that right there is going to help you find new clients. And then finally... Never, ever discount the power of a phone call. You see, most importantly to the people you know, right? You want to call those people. But also, the follow for the people you're getting to know, and even the prospecting of those who you don't know. And in fact, this can work beyond just a call. This strategy can be applied to any conversation on any channel. Okay, so when you're doing the phone call or when you're connecting with people across any one of those seven channels and you're thinking to yourself, and and again, this is really good for the phone call, but again, can be applied other places, as I just said three times. Um, It's about the strategy. What do I say? What conversation am I going to have? You know, because that's the big thing. People are always like, man, I don't even know what to say. And I typically tell you, you want to know what to say? Ready? Write this down. Say Hi. People are like, that's it? Just say hi? Yeah, it's amazing what happens when you say hi. People actually say hi back. It's kind of cool. But now it's like, well, okay, Dave, you know, let's get past that. Like, what, what do we actually see on this phone call? And this is where you can get into, you know, again, knowing who it is you're talking to. And part of the idea of predictable days with income producing activities is that I want you, when you talk to somebody, to write notes down, take those notes, put them in your schedule. Now you're going to take this David Greenspan guy you were just talking to. You're going to put all the notes about the phone call you had with David. You're then going to take David in your schedule. You're going to push David ahead in maybe six, seven, eight months. You're going to make sure he's on your 10-year plan so you're always building Mindshare. And now in six, seven, eight months, when you go back and you see David in your schedule, you go, why am I calling David? You go back to the notes and go, ah, we spoke six, seven, or eight months ago. We talked about ABC. You know, maybe today I'm going to talk about XYZ. But you're still thinking, yeah, but Dave, what is the XYZ? Well, here we go. It's called Ford. It stands for Family, Occupation, Recreation, and Dreams. Now, you might have heard this one before, but come on. This makes it so simple. I mean, look, you want, even before that, you think about it with COVID, you're calling, hey, how's it going? How's business? How's family? Is everybody healthy? Hoping all is well, yada, yada, yada. And this is very similar, right? So again, family. Hey, how's the family? Everyone healthy? What have you been doing to keep busy? Occupation. And, and again, you want to make this conversation. This is not a, a, a checklist. This is not something where, you know, okay, check. Now I'm going to ask you about this. It's just you got to flow. And for some people, you're not going to go through all this. For some people, you're going to talk about one subject, and that's it because you know these people and you guys have things in common. But again, this is meant to help you spark a conversation. 
or, or carry a conversation, okay? But you're always digging about them as opposed to, hey, here's what I'm up to. Hey, I this. Hey, I that. Instead, you're asking about them. You're digging. You're listening. You're letting them talk. You're picking up on things they say as, they, as you dig, and then you're mirroring that back to them. And if you're wondering what's mirroring, go check out my episode with Chris Voss, the FBI negotiator. He was the author or is the author of the famous title called Never Split the Difference. Um, but, again, we're digging, we're listening, and so we're going through this. And, and, and if we find that we've got somebody dry on the phone or we're trying to extend the conversation, pull teeth a little bit, here's what we're going through, right? So, again, family. How's the family? Is everybody healthy? What have you been doing to keep busy? Then we go to occupation. Hey, how's work? Are you busy? Are you back at the office? Have there been any major changes recently? What are you doing to get business? Then we go into recreation. Again, sports sports leagues are canceled. Kids are home. What are you doing for fun this summer? What are you up to? And then we can talk about dreams. So what's the big plan? Do you have any big trips planned or anything exciting happening in the next little while? Now, right there, somebody might tell you, oh, we were supposed to be in, you know, on vacation, blah, 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 but because of COVID, we couldn't go, right? Or recreation, they might talk about sports. They go, oh, yeah, little Johnny's, you know, baseball can- was canceled. Oh, my God, Josh, was- baseball was canceled as well. Where's Johnny playing? What level is he playing at? You know what? How old is he? You get it? Uh, occupation, if you're talking to somebody that's even in a similar line of business as you and you start to dig in, what are they doing to get business? That is going to help you learn. So, again, family, occupation, recreation, and dreams. You see, the more interest you have in them, the more they're going to enjoy the conversation, which means the more you are going to learn. Now, like I said before, do not make it a checklist of questions. Instead, keep it genuine and keep it natural. Always be sure you're adding your notes to their file in your CRM, like I said, keeping you in the know for the next call and and that you're always scheduling ahead for that next call. Again, income-producing activities. Bottom line, that's how you build Mindshare and set yourself up for that next deal. So with everything that this world threw at us over the past six months, we're only halfway there and we have no idea what lies ahead. But that being said, when we have a plan, we can be resilient. When we achieve, we feel better. When we feel better, people notice. When people notice... We win more. You see, I shared my story with you off the top to give you a sense of me, where I'm at, why I'm here now, how I help you, and to give you the ability to do your own reflecting. Where were you? And where are you going? You see, I did this to share with you that the sun isn't shining every single day and that you're not the only one who has been affected. Everybody's going through something. And whatever you're dealing with, I want you to know I'm here to help you with it. I'll also tell you that on this side, things don't stop. Kits is pumping along. So if you're open to exploring a cross-channel marketing suite that we've designed to make your life easy, to help you keep costs down and to be an effective mindshare builder for you, then let us know and our, our team would be happy to give you the grand tour and answer all of your questions. I also invite you to join us in Mindshare 101, our private community of Mindshare Masters. It is a low-cost, yet highly effective coaching program that will give you the ammo you need to dominate your market and help you make a lot of money. And as we're always evolving, we've just introduced a way for you to take advantage of all of the benefits of Mindshare 101 and, and what we offer at absolutely no cost. But for this, for this, you're going to have to get in touch with me personally. This offer is only for you if you are serious about making money and growing your business. This is free. All it takes is your desire to win. So just get in touch with me. 16 years of marketing, building houses, certified sell mortgages, real estate license, and a full-on education channel, and we're still not stopping. I just want to take over the world. Is that too much to want in life? You're either listening to this on iTunes, iHeartRadio, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, or Spotify. Or maybe you downloaded our free Industry Syndicate podcast app, or maybe you went to my website, MindShare101.com. And while you're on my site, again, make sure you download your free copy of the 7 Ways to Communicate ebook to help you build more Mindshare so that you can get more market share. 
Wherever you like to consume your content, please rate, review, and subscribe. It would mean so much to me. And if you haven't yet, connect with me on Facebook at Mindshare 101 and on Instagram at David Greenspan 101. This has been another episode of the Mindshare Podcast. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in.